Before artificial intelligence had a name, before we understood how machines could think, there was a man who did. Norbert Wiener wasn't just a mathematician. He was a prophet, a genius who saw the future in circuits and codes and tried to save us from it. This is the story of a boy genius who tried to teach the world how to think before the machines did it for us. Born on November 26, 1894, Norbert Wiener was not like other children. By the time most kids were learning how to spell their names, Norbert was already reading books on philosophy. At three years old, he was reading both English and German. At seven, he was reading Darwin. His father, Leo Wiener, was a brilliant man, a professor of Slavic languages at Harvard. But he didn't just raise a son, he built a mind. From the moment Norbert could speak, his life became a mission to learn everything. By age nine, Norbert had finished high school. At 11, he entered college. He was small, awkward, and often shy. But when it came to numbers and ideas, he moved like lightning. People called him a child genius, but for Norbert, being ahead of everyone wasn't always a gift. It was a burden. He didn't fit in with the other kids. He didn't fit in with the adults either. His brain was running too fast and the world couldn't keep up. By age 17, he had a PhD in mathematics from Harvard. But the question wasn't how smart Norbert was. It was where that genius would lead him at a time when most people didn't understand how machines even worked, Norbert Wiener was already thinking about how they could learn. He wasn't just solving equations. He was imagining a future. A future where humans and machines would work together or collide. The world was changing fast. Trains were becoming faster. Radios were filling the air with voices. Machines were everywhere. But something even bigger was coming, war. In World War I, Norbert Wiener worked for the US military. He didn't carry a gun, he carried equations. He tried to predict where enemy shells would land, with math. But the army didn't listen. They thought his ideas were too strange, too complicated. So he watched, helpless, as science became a tool for destruction. Years later, when World War II began, Wiener came back to help, but this time his ideas were ready. The army needed help shooting down enemy planes. Pilots moved fast, too fast for human aim. So Norbert asked a simple question. What if the machine could learn to predict the pilot's next move? He built a system, one that used feedback, real-time data, and probability. It could adjust itself, improve itself, like a living brain. It was a new kind of science, a science of control, a science of communication between humans and machines. He called it cybernetics. It didn't just help win the war, it changed everything. From guided missiles to telephone systems, from early computers to future robots, cybernetics was the seed. Norbert wasn't just building technology, he was building a new way of thinking. He believed machines could become partners, not just tools. But he also saw the danger, a world where machines get smarter while humans fall asleep at the wheel. He had opened a door. What came through would reshape the world. Norbert Wiener didn't just want to solve problems. 
He wanted to understand how systems think, whether they were machines, people, or entire societies. And he believed one idea connected them all, feedback. Feedback is when the output of a system loops back and changes the next input. It's how we steer a bike, how a thermostat controls heat, how the brain learns from mistakes. And Wiener saw it everywhere. In machines, he used feedback to create smarter weapons, ones that could predict and adjust in real time. In biology, he saw feedback in how nerves send signals and react to pain. Even in economics and society, he saw patterns of control, balance and collapse. This wasn't just engineering, this was a new science of control and communication. He gave it a name, cybernetics, from the Greek word for steering a ship. To Vina, everything that processes information, humans, animals, machines, was part of the same family. They followed rules, they reacted to change, they could learn and even break down. He used probability theory to deal with uncertainty. Nothing was ever fully predictable, but with math, you could find the most likely outcome. This helped build radar systems and laid the foundation for artificial intelligence. He imagined machines that could teach themselves, improve themselves and interact with people. Long before the first robot walked or the first computer spoke, Wiener was already asking the hard questions. If machines learn, can they choose? If they become too fast, too smart, what happens to us? Wiener didn't just build the future, he warned us to be careful of it. He believed that power without understanding was dangerous. That control without ethics would lead to disaster. He had built the blueprint, a science that could shape machines, guide missiles, simulate thought. But Norbert Wiener had seen enough. He knew where it was heading and he was afraid. The same ideas that could help heal a paralyzed limb could also aim a weapon better than any soldier. The feedback loop had no conscience. In 1947, the military asked him to continue his research to help automate war Vina refused, not quietly, loudly, publicly, with rage in his voice. I do not wish to be part of this, he wrote. I will not work on weapons, not for any price. While the world celebrated the coming age of machines, Wiener warned of something darker. He saw factories replacing workers with algorithms. He saw governments turning communication into surveillance. He saw machines that listened, calculated, but did not understand. His books became urgent messages. The human use of human beings was not a celebration. It was a caution sign. He warned of dehumanization, of a world run by systems too complex to control, of people turned into cogs in their own creations. And the world barely listened. Others took his ideas further. Artificial intelligence, robotics, automation, but the man who started it all, he faded into the background. Near the end of his life, Norbert Wiener lived quietly, writing, thinking, watching the rise of the very forces he once dreamed of and now feared. In 1964, on a lecture trip to Sweden, Norbert Wiener died of a heart attack, alone, far from home, the father of cybernetics, silenced by the very systems he had spent a lifetime trying to understand. There were no grand memorials, no headlines shouting his name. But in the shadows of every algorithm, behind every smart machine, his fingerprints remain. Today, when we speak of artificial intelligence, of autonomous systems, we are walking paths Wiener mapped decades ago. But still, his final question echoes louder than ever. The real problem is not whether machines think, but whether men do. If this story moved you, even a little, please consider liking the video, especially our loyal subscribers who see it first. It really helps the algorithm share it with more people who might need to hear it. And if it didn't resonate with you, we'd still love to hear your thoughts. Honest feedback helps us improve and make better content. If you'd like to see more stories like this, you know where to find us. You can also reach out on social media. 
Links are on the screen and in the description. We'd love to connect. Thanks for being here. Stay thoughtful. Stay curious.